being our people who are in Haiti, we are here as Green Army to support them. Somebody will ask me why Green Army for Haiti. Green Army is a presidential flagship project that deals with tree growing, uh, greening the country, restoration of wetlands, and also ensuring that we address the issues of climate change and environmental conservation. You see, when you have green environment, when you have good climate, you have the tranquility and the peace that it deserves. So because of that peace aspect that comes with the environment, we are translating this peace aspect to support the people in Haiti that they get peace that we have as Green Army. So basically that is why we are part of this uh, caravan today and we are totally in full support of the people of Haiti as Green Army. Yes, thank you. Uh, just one question, uh, as the Green Army, yes. now uh, the budget that was set for uh, by the President, yes. uh, it's uh, around 15 billion, right? Now can you please enlighten us what that means to you as Green Army? Thank you very much. First of all, we want to appreciate the President for giving us, uh, for working tires, going outside the country to look for funds to support Green Army project. Now the president is working around the clock to launch a project that is going to involve all the youths countrywide in 10 regions to train them because you see you cannot do something when you don't have the background knowledge. So we are working on civic education, on tree growing, tree planting, environmental conservation for 10 regions. That is across the country from Nyanza to coast. So the youths of Kenya will be involved in the Green Army project they will tap into the resources that has been invested in that project. We are working with the uh, government agencies, the KFS and uh, the Nairobi River Commission and all those teams that are related to environmental cleaning. So what, this is what we are urging. In the coming days, we will be looking at, at the youths to bring on board organizations that are aligned with Green Army, organizations that are aligned with uh, uh, conservation. There are people who are doing tree planting, tree growing, seedlings, tree nurseries. These people will be brought on board so that that trees they are planting in the village, they can, the, the KFS can buy from them. Once they buy from them, they get that money directly to their pockets. Also, additionally on that, we are going to incorporate institutions. When we talk about institutions is um, universities, colleges, TVETs, and all those, those institutions. We are targeting uh, clubs that are dealing with the environment. We want to bring them on board because you see this knowledge that is in our campus or college they're being taught is what is needed outside here by Green Army so that we can use it to spearhead these 15 billion trees because the country forest cover should be more than that percent by 2027. So that is where we are heading as green. So the money that you are asking, I know that is a very sensitive question, but the government is working on seeing this money is absorbed directly to the youths, to the people at Mashinani, and to the people at grassroots level. Uh, me as Gen Z, me as a young yes. person, yes. how can I join a Green Army and how can I benefit from it? Thank you. Uh, we are glad because we want to engage the youth across the country. It depends on which category have you been doing issues to deal with environmental change. Because you see, you don't bring anybody to a project. Passion is the first thing. What have you been doing at your own capacity? I have an own organization that deals with uh, uh, greening the environment. Then we bring you on board as an organization. You are in school and you are championing uh, uh, for climate change. We bring you as an individual. You are maybe at home or within your region, you have been advocating for climate change. We bring you as an individual. So that is what we are focusing, rather than just saying we are taking everybody to this project, but we want to take the right people who are champions of greening the environment, especially those who are in Mashinani than those who are in Nairobi. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Your parting shot. Oh, yes. sorry. Okay, let me uh, just uh, to add on to that, yeah. uh, we're looking forward to working with around 5.6 million youths across the country. Uh, provide, uh, promote jobs. Uh, we have green green jobs that we are that are going to come up and also to anyone who might not have had the platform to start or might not know how to start then we are going to be launching the project very soon uh, in the meantime they can follow us on our social media accounts we post all our updates and we post how you can uh, use the environment to even earn an extra coin that is a uh, green army kenya
across all our social media platforms and we as the youth we are also rallying uh, the youth of Haiti to uh, take up the same steps that we are taking you know work towards a greener more peaceful Haiti because that is our main message for today you know it is green army for a greener peaceful Haiti and that is why we are here and that is what we have been working tirelessly the past couple of weeks for just to see this a success okay. secretary Musalia Mudavadi PS State Department for Foreign Affairs, Coril Singhawe. All distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, youth and friends of Haiti, good evening. It is an honor to be here at the Harmony for Haiti Concert and Cultural Festival. We come here today together, not to just enjoy the music, but to celebrate the strength of the Haitian people and the deep ties between our nations, as has been mentioned here by the Barbados Ambassador. This event is part of a broader, broader Africa for Haiti initiative, which seeks to support Haitian rebuilding efforts through diplomacy, culture, and youth empowerment. It is in the continuation of our shared history of resilience and fight for freedom, as Kenya stands with Haiti. We extend our solidarity, not just through words, but through actions, as you can see. Earlier this year, during our Mother's Day vigil at the Freedom Corner on the 12th of May, we released 12 white doves as a symbol of peace and hope. That vigil reminded us of the need to constantly fight for justice and unity. Soon after, or there before, we also held a diplomatic community breakfast briefing back in February, just to create the awareness to the diplomatic community. And I would really like to thank the diplomatic community for the support you've shown us to come for this event today. And we look forward to working, you, working with you very closely. And just recently, um, in, in, in February, we were privileged to host the Prime Minister of Haiti at the USIU, that is Prime Minister Ariel Henry, at the USIU in Nairobi. It was a monumental moment in the strengthening of bonds between our nations. And these are milestones that reflect our commitment to Haitians future. Let us therefore this evening serve as a let this evening serve as a celebration of our cultures, but also a call of action, a call to action to everybody. That that country called Haiti is very dear to every one of us. When you look at the statistics that are out there today, we are talking about a population of about 11.6 million. And the WFP, that is a World Food Program, has said 5.3 million Haitians are on the brink of starvation. And this starvation has been man-made by the gangsters. Because Haiti has been through a myriad of challenges from the time of Katrina, uh, the Hurricane Katrina, then they had two, se two separate earthquakes, and the entire infrastructure and the systems collapsed. And that's how the gangsters and, and the people who have no good faith in, in the country's growth and development took advantage. Right now, we are hearing almost every day 100 women are being raped. We are also being told that it has become a habit to kidnap women because women are the strength of our humanity. And thus, once they kidnap the a political solution, we do need a cultural and a more people-to-people -people solution. And that is the day Africa for Haiti was born. And this is just some of the things that we're going to be doing. So therefore, we are requesting the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the principal secretary and the entire national government to stand in the, in the diplomatic community and well wishes, to stand with us as Africa for Haiti, because we are going to make that hard journey and go to Haiti and help the young people rebuild their future. Because the statistics also show us that 70% of those gangs or gang members are actually children. That therefore shows us that if nothing is done faster for the people of Haiti, then we shall not have a nation called Haiti. And Amina rightly said, us as Africans, 
We love Haiti in our heart because indeed it was the first black independent nation in the world at a time when Africans were facing a very difficult time. So therefore, I'm appealing to all of you as I conclude, please join us in Africa for Haiti. So when you see a letter or a request being written to you, please accept it and allow us to build this cooperation together. And may God bless Haiti and protect our policemen and we, uh, policemen in Haiti and may long live Haiti. Thank you and God bless you. Everything you put your